welcome to another episode here at Deep Mountain Security. Today we're going to be discussing the differences between Command Prompt and PowerShell. And I've already got one open. So here we've got Command Prompt. Uh, a couple ways to get to it. And the fastest way is just to go Windows key and then run and then CMD or cmd.exe. Um, either one will open up a command prompt. This is standard in Windows and has been since Windows XP. Um, something that's a little bit more recent in Windows, however, is PowerShell. And you can type PowerShell right here. Um, you can actually open up command prompt and PowerShell from one another. So over here we can go PowerShell and open up PowerShell. Um, but we're going to get out of that. Um, and then over here you can actually type in CMD and open up command prompt but we don't want to be in one or the other, so we're not going to worry about that right now. All right, so now that I've got these two windows open, we're gonna kind of discuss some of the differences, and I just wanna show you guys why PowerShell is better, and kind of go over a couple of different things that you can do in either one. Um, so for starters, if I type in, let's take a look at the example of some help over here. So if I type in help over here, you're gonna see that there's quite a number of different commands that you can run over here. If I type in help over here, well, it doesn't this is just gonna give you help for the help. And we can kind of scroll down through more of this. Um, the actual command is get help. And then you can type in the name of a module afterwards or whatever, and it will give you information about the module, which is really nice. Um, however, over here, so you notice we've got a, all kinds of different uh, functions over here. Some of the more popular ones, for example, if we're going to be uh, for directory traversal, if we are uh, standard Windows directory traversal commands are um, dir is to list um, the different files that you have. And then we can say I wanted to move into my favorites that so I can go favorites and we're now in our favorites. And we can, I believe, that works to go back up. Um, so CDs change directory. DIR just lists the item in directory. Um, we can do the exact same things over here. I can go DIR, and then I can go CD favorites. And I'm actually going to tab to complete. And then I can also do the CD double dots to change my directory to the uh, directory above it. Um, so they're very similar. However, one thing that I do like is that PowerShell. So this uh, DIR is actually an alias for a PowerShell module. It's not actually a command. It's an alias or an alias, however you want to say that. Um, uh, and so there's a couple of other aliases that we can use as well. For example, ls, this is a common Linux command to list the items in a directory. And you can see that works as well. So if I actually type in get command here uh, and put ls, you're going to see that it's an alias for get child item. So if I type in get child item right here, tab complete, and hit the enter key, then it's going to be the exact same thing. So dir is the same way. If we type in get command uh, dir, uh, it's going to show us that dir is an alias for get child item. Um, so that's just so as you can see we've kind of you can already see that you can run can, r anything you can run in command prompt in powershell already so there's no downsides to using powershell so some other common windows commands that we run for example like um fdisk for formatting nope that's a windows command linux command my bad check disk no um hmm there is in here check disk that's what i thought maybe i just spelled it wrong okay so i guess i have to be an administrator on that uh, so let's open up an administrative command prompt and to do that you can type in cmd right here right click and then run as administrator it'll let me run as admin and it won't. Why in the world? Run as administrator. Then we can click yes. 
And now we're an administrative. Now we can run our check this. So you can see we can run check disk over here. We can do the exact same thing over here. Check disk. And it'll run it just fine. And access is also denied. However, this is much better. I can click this run as admin right there. And voila. You can see how much faster that was. So much easier. Um, so I don't know why the type is smaller in font size, but whatever. So check disk. If I can spell it right. Check disk. Rah. All right, so you can see it's doing running the exact same thing that this is over here, even though we don't really need to do that. So I'm just going to cancel that, and we're not going to worry about it. And let's clear. I can spell clear right. Uh, and you'll notice CLS works over here as well, because once again, it's an alias. So if I type in git command CLS, oh, it's clear host. Would you look at that? Okay, another couple of things. So there are a couple of variances. You can use ClearHost if you want to. Um, another nice thing is in command prompt, if I want to say something, I need to type in echo hello world. And then there's hello world. Uh, over here, I can just type in hello world. And voila, that comes so much easier. Um, another thing, nice thing about PowerShell is that it's very well suited to administrative tasks on your computer. Um, unlike command prompt, you can store variables and work with variables and different things directly from the command line. Um, so uh, uh, let me quickly, IP config, uh, this has nothing to do with variables, but I just want to show you if I type in IP config over here, it's going to show you what I'm connected to. I can type in the exact same command over here and it's going to give me all the IP config stats. So you can run everything you can in the PowerShell in command prompt. However, I want to get a little bit more into PowerShell and what we can do. So I can create a variable and name it test. Test currently has nothing in it because um, uh, there's nothing in it. So I can go test, check and see if it's equal to null and it is equal to null. Uh, we'll get more into PowerShell operators and why this is equal, but you can see that there's great stuff here already. We can even calculate like megabytes and gigabytes and stuff like that. So 10 gigabytes, that's how many bytes are in 10 gigabytes. Would you look at that? Fun stuff, huh? Uh, and you can do that one megabyte or two megabytes or 15 kilobytes or whatever. And we can go, you know, uh, one megabyte is is equal to uh, one zero two four. And that is false because it should actually be equal to that many kilobytes, which is true. OK, so you can kind of see that that's kind of the way that works right there. Um, so test isn't currently have anything in it. Now we can go test is equal to, and we can set it equal to something like IP config. In the which case, now if we go and look at test, oh, look, we've got all our data from IP config in our test variable. Try doing that in command prompt. Yeah, not so easy. Uh, another thing is we can work with different kinds of variables in PowerShell. For example, I can go test.get type, um, and this will tell me what it is. So it looks like it's an object and it's an array. So we can, if it's an array, then that means we can do standard array commands on it, like test zero, test one, Windows IP configuration, um, test um, nine. Uh, seven minute mask or whatever. So you can see we can get some different data out of this. Um, now, if we're working with specific PowerShell commands instead of something as arbitrary as IP config, then we might be able to do uh, a little bit more in depth analysis. For example, let's run something else. So, uh, top three commands you're going to use in PowerShell is git command, git help, and git type. Okay, and uh, uh, git member is also useful. So uh, git command, git, uh, and uh, git help are uh, different things you can use to find stuff out. So if I go git command, and I want to know everything to do with IP, but I don't know what around IP, then I can see that these all have IP somewhere inside of here. And then you can notice that most of these are either get or new or remove or set. Uh, so there's a couple different ways that it'll do this. Um, 
but we can see here get net IP address or IP configuration or you know one of these will probably do what we want let's go with get net IP configuration so I can go get uh, let's actually going to get help on that shall we get help get net IP configuration and let's not do that right now just because of time um, but I highly recommend that you do update your help because it's always good stuff and then it can kind of give us some of the syntax and then with that you can also run get examples or uh, full or uh, detailed um, to get different kinds of information off of it anyways so let's run get net IP configuration and you're gonna notice that it looks very similar to IP config. There we go. And the fact that it contains all the same information. Now what we can do is we can take our test variable and set it equal to get net IP config. And then we can go look at test and well look at all that. Fun, huh? So now we can go to test and we can try and see what type it is. So get type. Uh, and this is just going to tell us what it is and it looks like it is a system object under net IP configuration is the name and it's a system object so we can let, let's see if we can figure out what kinds of things we can do with this so I'm gonna type in get uh, members so I'm piping the output of test into get member so we're gonna pipe test to get member so we can figure out what we can do with it okay so we can see that we've got a couple different things here now we've got some properties so you can see that some of these things like IPv4 address right here is a property very interesting right so when I can go test dot and then I can go IPv4 uh, and I'm just gonna tab to address and here is my address with information about the address interesting huh I keep saying that anyhow um, maybe we want to look about the uh, the net adapter right up here you know um, so I'm going to go test dot net adapter and it's gonna tell me that it is currently on Ethernet 0 which has an index of 2 that's the internet uh, that's the uh, adapter interface index is what that is and that's useful for other things when you don't want to type out the actual uh, name of the object and we can get the same interface for, uh, information from going get uh, net IP interface and you'll see that this will list all the interfaces and their different information interface index and some other stuff about it and we could go on into details about PowerShell modules all day. If there's a specific one you want information on, go ahead, let me know in the comments below. We'll make sure to cover it another day in another video. Um, or if there are particular aspects of PowerShell you want us to cover. But I just wanted to quickly show you guys that uh, PowerShell is so much easier to use than Command Prompt. Um, a couple more things I want to do here before we're done today. Um, I just want to show you uh, that you can make functions in PowerShell. You can do so. PowerShell allows you to write scripts, so you can write scripts in uh, Command Prompt. It's generally saved as a .bat file or .bat file or a .batch file. It's generally what they're called. Uh, but in PowerShell, they're generally saved as a .ps1 or uh, similar suffix onto your uh, file. But um. Uh, one thing I want to point out is that the scripting index in PowerShell compared to Command Prompt, and Command Prompt it's similar to your Bash environment on a Linux box in the fact that it's a line-by-line -line scripting environment. Windows PowerShell, on the other hand, is an object-oriented programming environment, allowing you to create functions, data types, and work with them. It's uh, very similarly based off of C-based languages because that's the way they wanted it. So you'll notice it has similarities to both C-based languages and the .NET language itself. And I gotta say I love the .NET language and I'm a fairly big advocate of uh, some of the C languages. Um, that's a topic for another day though. Um, so really quick I just want to show you how to create a function. So let's go uh, define ourselves a function. We're going to call it a function and we're going to say function add and let's give it a couple parameters shall we? Uh, these are going to be in the form of a variable. Variables in PowerShell always start with a dollar sign. 
including your true, false, null, etc. Um, so let's go variable num1, comma, uh, num2. And then I'm going to put a bracket here to specify that we are um, uh, continuing on inside our function. Our function is going to be inside brackets. And now this could all be done on the same line. That's not a problem, but I'm not going to do it. And so I'm just going to do num1 plus num2. Notice I'm not saving it in a variable, so this is going to be output to the screen. And then I'm just going to close this off. So now we've created a function. I can go add 1 and 2 is 3. And we've created a function, called our function, and we can do this again and again and again. I'm telling you PowerShell is fantastic, and I'm just going to keep emphasizing that because this is wonderful. We can also, now, our num1 and our num2, we didn't specifically specify that we wanted them to be integers, and I love this about PowerShell. We can go add, and we can try adding. Let's add a couple of strings together. Let's add hello. And let's add world and see what happens. Oh, look, hello world. Like I'm saying, PowerShell is fantastic. We can add some floats together. Let's add 1.5 and 90, 19, sure, uh, 20.5. Look at that. Uh, we could even try adding. So PowerShell, when you're adding uh, mixed data types, it'll generally try to convert the second data type to the first data type. So if I go add hello and then i go 15 or 156 it'll go hello 156 however if i go add 156 and then hello it's probably going to throw an error yep because we can't convert hello to 156 but you'll notice it converted 156 to hello just fine and if we have a string hello so i'm not saving this as a variable but this works too and i go get member um you're going to notice that we don't have a um, 2 int 32 on here. Well, it does, but it, it what it does is it tries to convert it, but it doesn't really. Um, so if we tried to go hello, um, let's go test is equal to um, hello dot 2 uint 32. Um, we can't convert it because it can't overload it um, but it'll try and these uh, are going to be on pretty much every standard data type however it works the other way around so uh, 14 pipe it to get member and you're going to notice that we've got less than the string does because in a string we can use indexes and convert it to a char array and that's useful for when you're dealing with individual characters within it uh, we'll get into that another day if you want that in a video let me know um, but we can convert it to a string for example so we can go um, test is equal to 14 so test.get type um, is an int 32 great now if we want to convert that we can go test is equal to test dot to string and now we can go test dot get type and look it's a string now and well it still contains in there 14 but now it's a string and now we can't convert it back um, so there's just a lot of really cool features that you can do stuff like this in PowerShell and probably one of my favorite features from the PowerShell besides the fact that you can write scripts with functions that can do all kinds of stuff to your own modules is that you can work from it in the command line you can run stuff right here without any kind of a problem with all and to me that is just fantastic it's almost like a Python interface on your command line where you can create variables uh, run functions on the variables move things around and just play around with it and have fun it's super useful useful for when you're doing any kind of scripting. Um, uh, one th last thing I want to show you real quick is just how easy it is to say hello world 15 times over. We can go um, for each. I'm not going to do an alias here like I could. Um, we're going to go x in 1 to 10 hello world and voila hello world 10 times i'm telling you powershell is fantastic um and i'm just gonna leave it at that and if you guys want more in-depth features on anything you've seen today maybe even command line based stuff although i'll probably demonstrate it in powershell instead or, or anything in particular in powershell you want to learn more about let me know in the comments below thanks for watching don't forget to like and subscribe have a great day